praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, shalom, shalom. My brother, my sister, welcome to the Lord's Hour. This is your host, brother in Christ, brother L.V. Zapata. Hallelujah. Coming to you live from the highest mountain of North Carolina. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. 2,400 feet high. Hallelujah. 1,400 feet higher than one, the 1,000 feet tsunami that is coming through Florida. Hallelujah. That for sure we're going to be protected. Hallelujah. Temporarily. Amen. I don't know if the second or third tsunami. Hallelujah. We're able to be safe, but that is not going to matter because we are going to be out of here before that tsunami comes. My brother and sister, amen. We need to be repenting, seeking the Lord every day. Hallelujah. Looking forward to being with God. Our time is over on this earth. And so thank you, Jesus. We're looking forward to being with him and the wedding celebration of the bride of Christ. My brother and sister, do not miss the wedding celebration. Do all you can to be in repentance daily. You don't want the trumpet to sound and for you to stay behind. My brother and sister, I'm looking forward to the wedding. So I don't want to stay behind. When, when I see myself, hallelujah, uh, taking a chance, I've been repenting and, and really, hallelujah, thinking I'm missing that wedding to me. Hallelujah. It's not something I look forward. I will look forward to being in the wedding. I've been inside the wedding with Jesus and, and brothers and sisters. And let me tell you what the feeling of being inside the wedding celebration. Um, I saw brothers and sisters dancing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Like David in a mighty and the mighty fire, mighty anointing, mighty presence of God from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet. And they were spinning around, dancing of joy, looking at one another with great joy, my brother and sister. I saw Jesus uh, dressed as the bridegroom, looking at my brothers and sisters, full of joy and peace for seeing his children in his wedding. My brother and sister, it is such a hallelujah blessing, joy that we're going to have. I was inside there and I was dancing also. And my brother and sister, the Lord came to me and says, and began to talk to me, my brother and sister, to send me back. Go tell them about this place, he says. To me and and since that time I have come back my brother and sister I didn't want to be out of there go go my servant go tell them about this place okay go tell them about this celebration believe was the other word hallelujah that I will want them to come here so don't miss the the wedding celebration you've been invited to God have invited you, has sent his messenger, his preacher, his leader to tell you about the wedding celebration. In Matthew 25, you hear the, the parable of the ten virgins. Those virgin men, holy people of God that Jesus was coming to take home with him. Half of them was wise and half of them were foolish. The foolish bride did not prepare fully for his coming. That means that even when you don't feel like praying, pray. And you don't have to be on your knees praying all the time like some people think. Okay, you may be laying down sometimes, not always, or sitting down. But don't miss that word in celebration. Pray without ceasing. Laying down. David prayed laying down. Okay? My brother and sister, standing, sitting on your knees, I believe it's one of the most humbling prayer you can do. You know, uh, closing your eyes, I believe it's also a humble prayer. I hear a lot of people praying with their eyes open. 
And, and the reason why I say this because if when you close your eyes and you're in prayer, you're focused on the Lord. You you you're just focused on Him. You know, you're not focused on anything else. If you got your eyes open and you're praying, you're focused on everything that's going on in front of you. You know, just just keep your eye, close your eyes. And if you're by yourself in a room, okay. But if you have a lot of people in front of you or, or other people entertaining you, close your eyes. You know, but if you're by yourself in a room, you can open your eyes, no problem. Hallelujah. I do that overnight, in my overnight prayer. I keep my eyes open so I don't fall asleep. As long as I have my eyes open while I'm praying, I know I'm not falling asleep. Okay? I check myself. And Paul talks about us checking ourselves. It's important. In other words, we know that we're seeking God. We're seeking the Lord. We're seeking to be going home, my brother and sister. Okay, so it's important that we stay focused on Him. It it is it is very important. Now, our Messiah, our Rabbi, the greatest Rabbi that ever set foot on this earth, the greatest teacher, in Matthew 13, the Bible said, in that same day, Jesus left the house, sat down by the Sea of Galilee. The crowd gathered around Him was so large that He got into the boat. My brother and sister. He said on the boat while the entire crowd stood on the shore and he used the story as illustration to tell them many things. I'm waiting for God's word translation. Okay. He used story. He used parables, says the King James. It's a story and illustration, the same meaning. My brother insisted to speak to the people. I'm going to share revelation from the Lord later on. But I want to get into this word tonight. My brother insisted. Hallelujah. Because we, the bride, must seek to understand. And the story, the illustration are good. As long as they lead you to get closer to God, to humble yourself. In other words, you may not see it. Okay? You may not see him. But at least when, when you get an illustration of his word, of his message, of his revelation, it helps you to understand. Okay? It's very important. He said, listen, a farmer, and it's good that the Lord wanted them to listen because when you are speaking, I tell this to my children, when you are speaking, you are not listening let every man be slow to speak and quick to hear or listen, my brother and sister. So if you're always talking, you listen very little. This is how we know that we are not good listeners when we're always speaking. Because when you're speaking, you're not listening. I never liked it to be a great speaker. It was never my thing. It was never my desire. Actually, the Lord had to push me to do this. He has to insist I do this. My brother insisted. Because I was never looking forward to speak, especially to the multitude. You know? But when I gave my life to the Lord, when I seen what God did in my life, I look forward to share my experience. It was not so much to speak. If I could speak with my mouth closed, I would. Okay? If I could speak with my mouth closed, I would. If I could communicate with people with my mouth closed, that would be awesome. But I noticed that it's very difficult for me. So I had to speak. My brother insisted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. And so, in most of my revelation of heaven, I listen. Very few people think that when I see the Lord immediately, I'm asking him all kinds of questions. It's totally the opposite. I'm listening to him. Because he knows, oh, what do I know? I know nothing. And I cannot base 
my relationship with God one, and the earthly knowledge that I have is garbage. Earthly knowledge is garbage. The apostle Paul says the same. My brother and sister, everything he knew, he put it at the feet of Jesus. My brother and sister, it is what he teaches us that is value. More than gold, more than silver. His wisdom is more value than gold and silver. And any precious stone. So we learn of him. We learn from him. From his lips. His words are more sweet than honey. My brother and sister to our soul, to our spirit. We will live when he gives us life. His word gives us life. My brother and sister. Very important. We listen to him. And sometimes he'll give us a word for you when you listen. Or oh, all time, I know this for a fact. God speaks to us every day. Every day God speaks to each and one of us. And if you say God don't speak to me every day, I'm going to tell you something. You probably never heard this before. If you say that God don't speak to you every day, that means you're not opening the Bible every day. Open his word, his Bible, and listen to what he has to say. One of the ways that I learned him speaking to me was when I read his word, and I hear the word coming out of my own mouth. As the word came out of my mouth, his word and I hear there were a specific word for that day for me. Pastor John learned of this mystery that only about a handful of people know. That you can open God's word every day, the Bible. And God will lead you to a, a specific word for the day for you. And if every day you look forward for that, per, for that word from God for your life, for whatever situation you may encounter on that day, Jesus says this very clear. Every day bring his own trouble, problem, problema. Every day. Every day. God has a word for your day. If you read the Bible before you leave your house, Seeking for a word for that day. God will give you a word for whatever you are going to encounter that day. And that word will carry you through the day. Will lift you up. Will prepare the day for you. It doesn't matter what it is. Even if the word is, I will deliver you this day. When someone puts a gun to your head, that bullet, that gun is not going to go off. And if it go off, that bullet will not hit you. And that word will come to pass in your life that day. Please understand a derail train or bus coming your way that you don't see, that you don't know is coming your way. If God gives you a word for that day, the bus and the train will not hit you. You will be delivered by the power of God, His word. His word is alive. His word is alive. Because He lived it. We will also live because he is alive. His word is alive. God will give you a word for the day. Seek that word because it's more valuable than diamond and gold. And any riches you can seek, seek that daily word from God. Go to his word for that daily word for your life. Before you go and do anything. And watch and speak to you. Open the Bible. Don't even think about the chapter. The books. 
Put the Bible between your hands. And open our Bible whenever it opens. Shalom, Sister Luna. And it will open to the word that God will speak to your life. And sometime out of an entire chapter, he'll give you one verse for that day. And that verse will carry you. It will be a shield for your day. It will be a sword against your enemy. Whatever your enemy throws against you, that word will be a shield. And that word will be a sword against them. My brother and sister, thank you, Jesus. Even before Pastor John Wayman made a, a business deal that God blessed, that God provided to him. He prayed for the business. God opened his door, my brother and sister, for the business. Hallelujah. And the business brought in up to $20,000 a month. I believe it was a week or a month. I think it was a week because he has employees and all that. So it was a week. He prayed for the business. God opened the door for the business. In every step of the way, before he went and signed any document and did anything, he opened, he prayed and opened the Bible. And the word that God would give him to do in the Bible, he wouldn't and apply it. When customer called him one day, he said to me, Brother come with me. I had this customer just call me. Come with me. He opened up the Bible. God gave him the word for the day. He says to me, this is the word I received for this day. Come with me and see the word of God in action. See God's word that is true, Brother Elvie. Like a child who had not ate several days was I to learn the way of the Lord. To see how God speaks. To learn how God speaks. And we, I follow him. I went to him in his car. And we went away to meet the customer. And the customer signed a contract with him. And he has said, I needed another contract. Because I want to make sure my employee gets paid. And the, I needed the money and I pray. This is the word God gave me this morning. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I already got the contract. The word I received this morning here is coming to pass. My brother and sister. And this is how his light was led. God spoke to him and guided him this way. A word for the day. And every single day, seven days a week, he will open up his Bible and seek for a word from God to speak to his life. My brother and sister, as I learned this from through him, I also went to the word of God, the Bible. And I also received a word. Hallelujah. And he led me through those words specifically. And those words comes anointed with the power and voice of God in it. When you seek it, you will find it. When you knock through prayer, it will be open. God will open. When you call, when you say, God, speak to me. God, and open your Bible, your word. Please speak to me. He will speak to your life. My brother and sister, but remember that every time you are talking, you are not listening. You are only listening when your mouth is quiet and you're paying attention. Look what Jesus says to the multitude. In Matthew 13, as the crowd and the multitude came, he began to speak them through a parable. And then he said, he said, listen, listen. In other words, be quiet 
and open your heart, your understanding to receive this word. How many times my parents told us growing up, my child, you never listen to me. And we wonder, okay, I hear what you're saying. Uh, okay, you, well, you're telling me to clean my room. Yeah, I told you I'll do it later. I just you, you say this to me every day, and then you don't go clean your room like I'm asking you. The whole day will go by, and if I don't go clean your room, you won't do it, LV. You don't listen to me. You need to stop doing what you're doing. Okay? And then go do what I'm telling you to do. My brother and sister, that's very hard for us. We human beings, we like to do our things, people say. Jesus said to the multitude, listen, a farmer went to plant seed. Some seed were planted along the road. And the bird came and devoured them. My brother insisted. You notice that the word he uses, and what the bird did, he uses the word devour. And let's say I use that word, and you said, wow, you're, you're such an exaggerator, Brother Elvis. Why do you have to use that word? What, what couldn't you say the bird ate the food? Devour. You know? But since this is a message of us be um, and a message of being careful, because see, here it is. If you don't listen, like many people have in the past and that have not listened, they have ended up in hell. If a person may end up in hell, how well can the Lord speak to this person? He's speaking to them that the bird can represent a demon, the devil. And if you don't listen, you can be the bower. So you see? The dangerous are not listening to the Lord. He sees ahead the destruction that is coming. He knows it all. And so he is speaking to us to listen. Stop what you are doing. Pay attention. And through his word, we're supposed to see the evil comes. And we hide in the Lord. Hallelujah. He wants to protect us, but we must listen. Okay? The bird devoured the food. They ate the food, but they devoured. It's like when they went on it, boom, 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 boom. They're eating out of control. And they left nothing. When your enemy comes against you, my brother and sister, it's out of control. When the, when, the, when the virus began to spread all over the world, it was daily, a hundred, a thousand, a million, quickly. There was no stopping. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. Listen. The other seed were planted on the rocky ground where there were little soil. And the plants spread out quickly because the soil wasn't deep. What is the significance of this word now? My brother and sister. When it's planted here, there is a quit action. And the months to come, there are things that are going to happen quickly. Suddenly. Sudden destruction. That's quick right there. My brother and sister. Quickly, things are going to unfold. Quickly, people are going to die multiple quickly. My brother insisted. So we must be ready with the Lord. We must be repenting. You cannot put off repenting. You must be ready because things are going to happen quickly. The rich man opened up his eyes and he found himself in hell. It was 
in the blinking of an eye, it was like he was just on the earth, enjoying his rich life, and opened up his eyes, and find himself in hell in the flame, surrounded by demon people being tormented. That was it. And find himself being tormented in the fire. War was that quick. You see why the Lord says, listen to the multitude? Because you're here right now, but some of you can blink and find yourself in hell. Whoa, is that fast? Exactly. That's how quick it is. 2020, 2020 begin, and people open their eyes and find themselves in hell quickly. 21 begins to buy sin. People open their eyes in hell. I was just in my body. They're in hell now. Quickly. We must listen. There's no time, my brother and sister, to waste. We don't have the timing we had before. Whatever is left is left. God has been speaking to us about timing. There is none. Any extra day. You and I get on this earth, or this earth, or the people, or, or all of us, because while we're here, it's extra. We're in extra time. Because God is in control of time. He'll give us a few days extra. Daniel saw a time, a time and a half. And then when you calculate the number of the Great Tribulation, it's a little over seven years. I was at the end of seven-year Great Tribulation, and the Tribulation was still going. And those people approached me at the end of the Tribulation and said, Brother Elvie, you have said, the Lord brought me in there. Where do you come from? And someone said, this is Brother Elvie from the Lord's hour. And I recognize some of them. I, I don't like to see people stay behind. It, it breaks my heart. I would, I would, my, immediately my heart was broken because I expect everyone to come home with me. I don't want anyone to stay behind. And seeing some people stay behind, oh, it re I, I was grieving right away. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm looking at them. Oh, no. Sister, oh, no. What happened? What happened? You know, and they began to give me reason why. You know? Okay. Well, the fact of the matter is you're already here. You're already at the end of the... Uh, the and they said, Brother Abby, what happened? We even heard you talking about Daniel 12. And you said that it's a seven-year great tribulation. We believe you. I know you are a man of God. Everything you said, we see it come to pass during the great tribulation. Everything you were preaching on the Lord's hour, we saw it. Where the own eyes come to pass. That in the seven year great tribulation. So we know you are a man of God. What happened? Why is a seven year great tribulation and we're still here? And I said, Oh, brother and sister, remember what brother Daniel, when you add the number, it goes over a little bit over seven years. Huh? Yeah. But since he always says seven years, yeah, Jacob Trouble is seven years. But there is a, a few, let's say weeks, my brother and sister, more. And I waited with them there for the time to be fulfilled. And all of a sudden, oh, he broke the, he broke the cloud. He broke the heaven. He brought his glory and nothing we know or everything we know was overpowered immediately. All evil, all principality, all fallen Neftalian. There was nothing he had not control of. You know what I remember? What the Apostle Paul said. He defeated the Antichrist with his glory. Just sure enough, he defeats his enemy. My Lord, my God, what a mighty God we serve. He defeated them with his glory. He entered in, boom. They cannot move. They are under power. They, 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 he's controlling them. He is on top of them. There's nothing they can do. They cannot move. They're frozen. His power is overpowering them completely. There's nothing they can do. My brother and sister, oh, you got to see it so beautiful. 
Uh, you know, ask the Lord. You want to see it from the wedding. <laughs> If you're not coming down on your horse with the Lord, ask the Lord that you don't want to miss his, his showing up on this earth. Because you're going to see one of the mightiest promises of God. My brother and sister, in Matthew 24, it tells you that he's coming with his angel and all his glory. In his glory, my brother and sister, he empowers everything. Overpowers everything. He overpowers everything. No devil, no, no antichrist, no full prophet, no Neftali in a thousand feet, two hundred feet. They overpower in millions. There's nothing they can do. That's why they fear God so much. Because he has all power. Like he said, he has all power in heaven and earth. I was on the floor. I cannot even move under that glory. Then he allowed me to move and look to, to him and his glory. Oh my Lord. Oh my God. I had not seen such glory. I had never seen such a power. I didn't know it was this way. You read about it, but our little brain and mind cannot imagine his glory and power. My brother insisted, my Lord, our Lord is God. Thank you, Jesus. And when he takes over everything, oh, my Lord, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to, Lord, please hear me, oh, Lord. Do not want to miss that day. I may not be there in presence, but I want to look from heaven and see that glory of him, my brother and sister. He promised that he would, and he's going to do so. He fulfilled his promise 100%. My brother and sister, 100% he fulfilled his promise. The other seed were planted on that rocky ground where there were little soil. And, and I, it, in the end, we are being told little soil. Okay? You need abundance of soil from God. The plants sprout quickly because the soil wasn't deep. Okay? It sprouted quickly. My brother and sister, I did this. I planted some tomato seed. In just a little, I put a bag under a little layer of soil. And I didn't know this. I should have made it in such a way that the root will go deeper on the ground. But I just put a bag because I didn't want the wheat to grow with the tomato. So I put a bag. I put a little so I shouldn't put a lot. And the tomatoes sprout quickly. But then they can, the little soil cannot hold the, the, to, the tomato plant because it was too little. But it sprout quickly. That's the word of God says. My brother and sister, and I, immediately I knew this was a mistake of mine. I could have removed them, but it was late in the winter. And I said, it's too late for that. I just leave them alone. They're going to die anyway. So the plants sprouted quickly because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched. Burn. 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 You need to have deep root in the Lord. The sun... The morning star is Jesus. My brother insisted. You need to be rooted in the word. You need, to, you need to be rooted in God. Your life, that is repenting daily. Seeking him daily. Committing your life to him daily. My brother insisted. And it's all about Jesus in your life every day. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. You may get into an argument with someone. You may offend someone. Someone may offend you. Okay? Blessed is a day that are not offended at me, Jesus said. Okay? Don't let that offend hold you back from repenting and seeking the Lord. No. 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 Learn to go through it. Ask the Lord if you find it hard and difficult for help. Lord, help me, minister me through this. Help me to understand, Lord Jesus. The Lord will allow trouble because every day brings their own trouble. But then he'll show you what's in your heart and repent when you see it. When he shows you what's in your heart. There's a lot of people, Lord, show me what's in your heart that is not pleasing to you. Through trouble, tribulation, he'll show you what's in your heart. He already knows what's in your heart. He can see. He's God Almighty. But then to try in tribulation, he'll show you what's in your heart, what is hidden in your heart, that no one sees but only God, that you don't even see what's in your heart, but God can see so clear. And to tribulation, trouble, argument, he'll show you. You'll be like, why did I act, why, why did I act this way? 
because it's been there, hidden. And God just showed it to you. They didn't say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I have this anger in me. This banging in me, Lord. When the Lord says banging, it's mine, saith the Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, I acted this way. I offended this person this way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me what's in my heart, Lord. Heal me. Restore me, Lord. Restore me. Make me right. Make me righteous. Make me like my father. Who is in heaven? Oh, yes, you Lord. Yes, you Lord. Heard the Lord say yes. Ask him for that. One prayer he likes is, I want to be like my father who is in heaven. What did he told his disciple? Be thou perfect like thy father who is in heaven. So, Lord, help me to be perfect like my father who is in heaven. Ask him for that every day. Don't miss asking for these things because they are significant and they are important to God. That you seek to be like your father. Perfect like your father who was in heaven. What he says to Abraham. Abraham, be thou perfect before me. Don't let people tell you that no one is perfect. Okay? Because you're asking God. You're asking God to help you to be perfect. And that means that whenever trouble comes your way, God is going to help you to overcome it the best way. Hallelujah for his glory. That's what that is. Okay? How did God de do deal with his enemy? He is loving and forgiveness. My brother and sister. And sometimes he always deal with mercy with them. Mercy. Triumphs over judgment. It's not like he just declared judgment on them. No, he had even mercy on Pharaoh and his people. But we'll get to the time when they don't listen where God says, all right, enough is enough. And the people, you're going to have to walk away and say, enough is enough. Simple. Perfect like your father who's in heaven. You look, you look at God, you look at the Lord, how the Lord lived, how Father, father dealt with the nation and the people. You will be dealing the same way he does in your own life with people. My brother and sister. We never judge people. Because when Jesus said, when Jesus, people wanted him to judge people, he said, I didn't come to judge but to save. That has to be our attitude with people. Okay? Oh, but then you see how this person is behaving and acting. You know, why should you be merciful to this? No, yes, you are. God is merciful for everyone. My brother and sister, even with this fallen world, he is. God is, Jesus has never changed. He's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Even when I said, Lord, I've already given you your, the Lord, I have already given them your word, you know, um, and he's still sending me again. He's merciful. He's good. He's loving. Look, people are going blindly into the great tribulation, vaccinated. What do they say now? 70%. 75% of the American people are vaccinated. 75% according to Biden in the White House. The well is getting there too. Quickly. My brother and sister. Quickly. Why do the enemies is so is so quickly in getting people vaccinated? Because he knows that the more time people have, the more time they have to repent and not take the vaccine. So they act quickly. The vaccines are being made thousands daily. Why? Not to give people the time to repent. Because if they do and repent, then they lose, they lose those people. They can't obligate them. God is watching everything. It has to be voluntary. As the Lord told me before he, he put me in hell. They're taking the vaccine out of their own will. The devil, they're not being put a gun to the head. You must take this by sin or I will shoot you. That's not happening. It's not like in Germany. Take it or leave it or you die. It's not we're not there yet. It won't get there. The Lord came to me this week and said, The persecution it's here, almost here. But he's over here. He's been speaking to me this way, 
my brother and sister, the urgency, persecution is here. My brother and sister. And the changing into beast is also here, the season for it. Okay? For two or three days now, he has opened my spiritual discernment smell. Where I can smell this demon. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible smell. If God opens that discernment in you, you'll be like, wow. You will want to bomb it every minute. It's here. Persecution is here. A government closed door, a meeting, are speaking to this cause. They're discussing now. They're saying amongst each other, how can we get the ambassador? How can we get the Christian? How can we get them? And they already put in plan. And how to come for us, my brother and sister. This is why there's no time for game. There's no time for game. A lot of people are wasting time. They're going to find themselves in the female camps, going hungry or in jail, being threatened, threatened by the security. You take this vaccination or we'll beat you. But I'm an American citizen. How can you say, how can you do this to me? Though people will say, they look at you and say, we don't care. But what about the Constitution? What about the Constitution? And you'll be like, wow. They're taking my rights away. They already done that a long time ago. You just didn't know. My brother and sister. Thanks are going to change quickly. My brother and sister, the rich man opened his eyes, he was in hell, the vaccinated. I opened the eyes and they're in hell. When I looked at all those thousands of people vaccinated in hell, entering in hell for the first time, each one of them had a demon on the right hand and left hand, bringing them in. Hundreds of thousands of them these demons will bring it in in line through the entrance of hell. The Lord wanted me to see this. My brother and sister, hallelujah. Because where God is, I told you this will come. I told you to be ready. You did not listen. Here's the consequence. That's what this parable is about. God told us so. If we did not listen, if we did not prepare, if we were not ready, to lay, to lay, like Jonah, you're going to have to cry out of hell, my brother and sister. You're going to have to cry your way out of hell. Jonah said, I cry by the reason of my affliction unto the Lord. He heard me. Out of the belly of hell cry I, and thou, thou heard it, my voice. Anyone will tell you that in regard to Jonah, Jonah was one of the most anointed prophets in the Bible. This man, hallelujah, had, a, had such a great testimony. That when he stood, people stood. When he said, people said. When he spoke, people were quiet. The multitude were quiet when Jonah spoke. He was full of wisdom, knowledge, and great testimony. A man of God. He was a holy, righteous man of God. But made one of the biggest mistakes of his life. And it was when God said, go to Nineveh. He decided to go to Tarsi. He decided to disobey the voice of God. My brother and sister. And every time you tell God, or anyone say to God, Hallelujah. This, I know this, this is what you're saying, but this is what I want to do. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Have mercy. Jonah did what God spoke through his servant Moses. 
to the children of Israel not to do. God said it shall come to pass that if thou shalt not hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth. And then he gives them a list of blessings if they hear. Verse 15, but it will come to pass that if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to a servant to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all the curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What Jonah did. The decision that Jonah and the vaccinated Christians are making, my brother and sister, are the hardest one. The hardest decision that people are making before God and before what God is saying to the people, not to take the by sin. When they decide to take the by sin, the Bible said, hallelujah, I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. My brothers and sisters, all these nuclear weapons that all these nations have in the United States, Russia over 4,000 and all these nations, when they begin to launch this bomb upon each other, the whole earth will be fully contaminated, the air, the water, the food supply. There will be no food for nobody. There will be no water for nobody. And the air will not be clean for nobody. My brother and sister, these are the curses that God said will come upon them if they will not hearken, if they will not listen to his voice. This is what coming upon this humanity. My brother and sister, but even worse, they're going, all the vaccinated said Jesus will be changed into beasts. Why? Because Revelation 18 2 says that whoever had joined the system of Babylon come part of it, be in it, and be part of it, which is the by seeing in the system of the Antichrist, my brother and sister, are taking part in her fornication and have become a dwelling, a demon. In horrible things, my brother and sister. This is why they change into beasts. Because horrible demons are becoming coming into the body as the soul being removed to hell. God said these curses will come upon them. And God is not a man that he will lie. Curse shall thou be in the city. Curse shall thou be in the field. Werewolf will be in the city. Werewolf will be in the field. Monster. And all kinds of beasts. Two head of beasts, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Johnson, a person who had two head and monster, will be changed into head and monster, my brother and sister. Even the Bicene will tell you there will be two headed, J and J. My brother and sister, it's horrible. Horrible. Curse should thou be thy basket in thy store. Hallelujah. People get their food in the store, in the supermarket. Their supermarket will become cursed. They will be empty. They will have no food. My brother and sister. It's the outcome of the curse. Curse of thy fruit. Hallelujah. The fruit of thy body. Yes, because all that chemical from the, hallelujah, from the nuclear weapon will go inside your body. The fruit of thy land. Your land, of course, with all the nuclear Hallelujah, weapon, radiation going into the land. The land will also be cursed. The increase of thy cattle, your animal will be cursed by the nuclear weapon, the flock, and thy sheep. Everything become cursed for not listening to the voice of the Lord thy God. My brother and sister, my Lord, my God have mercy. This is terrible down here. This is why the Lord is removing his bride. You even have pastors in churches preaching about that great day of the Lord removing his bride. 
where Matthew 25 tells you that the Lord comes in the midnight hour to take his bride out of the way. And how can they deny a rapture, the pasture of the bride of Christ? How? What foundation? My brother and sister. Hallelujah. So everything has been becoming cursed. Everything that should be blessed is being cursed from the pulpit down, from the homes out, and the field, and the land, and the supermarket, everything. Look at the shell already becoming empty. I said last year that we will have, hallelujah, a very clear sign of the seven-year gray famine, seven years of famine, hallelujah, which the Jewish people say would be the worst. Starting in 2022, our supermarket shelf, their video online, are becoming empty in the different state. The famine has already begun to be filled everywhere. Anyone on the surf already, hallelujah, is taking a little part in the famine that had already begun. And it's only the beginning. If the famine had already been three and a half years, we can say, wow, yeah, we're in the middle of the famine. You know? There should be, you know, shell should be empty. This is just the beginning. We're still in January. My brother and sister, we're still in January, and we already began to feel the famine. Unemployment has begun to rise. Companies are beginning to close. I had a person tell me, two banks in California already closed their door. Banks are closing their doors. My brother and sister, Praise the Lord. Your IRS, your, your government is watching your $600 and up movement that you make. In other words, if you go to your bank and you take out your $600, the IRS wants to know why are you taking our money out of the bank. And then you say, but I thought it was my money. They want to know what you're doing with their money. Because their only salvation is your $600 in your bank account. And you thought six hundred dollars was nothing compared to the billion? No, they want the the billion they have, and they want your six hundred dollar that you have in your bank account, huh? It, isn't that curse? What more curse can your government be, my brother and sister? Whatever little you have, plus what they have, they want. So what do they want you to have? Nothing. They want you to die. Depopulation is called. My brother said, they want you to die. They don't want you to have food, to, money to buy food to eat or food to eat. My brother and sister, China sent a bunch of food to the U.S. And they decided to leave those bulk full of food and let it rotten on the sea. They don't want the food to get to you like it used to be. Coming from other country. No, it's going bad on the boat. You know, they're full of food and not food to feed the nation. No, they're, allow they're allowing it to go back. Biden don't care. No, make sure you keep it on the sea. We don't want that food in our land. What what they lay until the food goes, goes bad? Huh? <laughs> evil upon evil upon evil, my brother and sister. They're, la they're laughing themselves. They're laughing at people. If you got your trust in your government, oh, my Lord, you're going to go bankrupt. And they go bankrupt if you got your trust in your government. A lot of people that are being vaccinated, they're finding out in hell that they should have never trusted the government. My brother and sister, sad. This is a wicked world we're in, my brother and sister. God is taking his people out. This is evil down here. Evil. My brother and sister. Cursed shall thou be when thou comes in. Cursed shall be when thou goes out, saith the Lord. My brother and sister, Renami 28, 19. Curses, curses, in and out. There's no way of escaping them unless you repent, is what God is saying. Unless you repent, you won't escape them. You will not escape them. Unless you turn back to God, you will not escape them. This humanity is in the biggest trouble of their life, more trouble than what they can handle. It's in front of them. Every day. 
every day the store will go dry, the star market will go dry, our government will dry, looking forward to your $20. And the months to come, and the days to come, the government is looking to your $20, to your $5, to your $10. They're looking to, for that. You think you're hiding those $20 or $5? No, they want it. That's what their hope is. That's how they're looking to save themselves and let you die. My Lord, my God. This is a wicked generation. So Jesus said that the plants sprout quickly because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came out, they were they was scorched, burned. They withered because the, the root weren't deep enough. My brother and sister, the reason why people are weathering away, are dying enough, is because their root and God are not deep enough. They're not deep in the word. They're not deep in the relationship with God. So what do you mean deep, Brother Elvie? That's when you shut off everything and you say, I need to fast. I need to get in with the Lord. And you shut off NTV and all these wicked channels that people are watching every day. And you shut up all those services. And you say, I'm not going to have television in my house. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend time with God. It's what I'm going to do. And when you do that, you root yourself in God. And whatever evil comes, the economy for whatever happens, it don't matter to you. It's not going to affect you. Because the kingdom of God... Hallelujah. The economy down here doesn't affect the kingdom of God. Your blessing comes from the Lord. Your reward comes from the Lord. And the kingdom of God never runs out of anything. There's actually always abundance up there. Abundance. When the Lord took me to the planet that is full of fruit. And everything you could eat and have more than a billion people. My, more, I'm sorry, more than a billion earth can, can eat abundance like you cannot even imagine. I saw it from the sky before the Lord allowed me to lay down in the planet. I could not imagine that God has a planet that can supply food for 200 billion, it's 200 billion, over 200 billion bigger than our galaxy. Not just the Earth, our galaxy. Can you imagine the billions and trillions of people that can eat? And the supply is always there. You pick up a fruit and it's there. Any fruit you can eat that you like, they look delicious. When I ate one of them, I was like, oh, 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 man. And grab another one, grab another. I just want to eat them all. Delicious, sweet, good for you. My brother and sister. In abundance. Oh, my God, that's so much abundance. There's so much abundance in his kingdom. You cannot imagine. I share with you that my brother Milton was having a salad, a fruit salad, vegetable and salad. Oh, was he enjoying that? He looked at me while he was eating that. Close to the throne of God, my brother and sister. Oh, he looked at me and laughed. That, remember when he invited me to eat and I said, I asked him if the fruit was watching. He looked at me and laughed like, you're going to worry about watching your fruit up in heaven, Elvi? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's no contamination up here. Praise you, Lord. There's no dirt. They're not going to be dirty. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. But wait, you know, this is how it is down here. We've been here too long. I'm going to be here 50 this, this year on this earth. My brother, it's just horrible. Horrible. And so, everything is perfect in God. He makes all things new. Jesus makes all things new. In abundance, the earth and the millennium for a thousand years will be full of abundance. I didn't see no one worrying in the millennium that they were, gonna ha were not going to have food. Not a single person. I mean, I have walked the earth and the millennium so much from the United States to the island, from here to there, I mean, almost everywhere. Now, I'm not going to say everywhere. God forgive me for saying that. But I've been to several places on the earth in the millennium. Okay? 
Not a single person is worried of what they're going to eat tomorrow. Whether it's going to be there, yes or no. Namala, not even comes to mind. Everyone has abundance. And they don't even think about eating. We're mostly focused on doing the will of God. The way the earth should be. Doing the will of the Father. Not my will, Father, Jesus said. But thy will be done. That's what the millennium is about. Everybody is busy doing the will of the Father. Everybody. No one is complaining. The millennium begins full of joy, peace, and abundance. Not a single soul complains. Not a single child or person complains. Everybody's happy and full of joy. And when you greet someone, oh, they give you a full, a full smile. Very happy and full of joy. Huh? Isn't our God good? good. Oh, he is great. Huh? And you just want to worship him. Praise you, Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. As the prophet prophesied. The whole earth is full of his glory. My brothers, nothing will harm in my holy mountain. Say it, the Lord. Oh, oh. Nothing. Hallelujah. It's just peaceful everywhere. I saw the animals. You can go pet the lions. And if you can find a snake, you, you will play with the snake. You can put your finger in her mouth. Because she will not harm. Nothing will hurt in my holy mountain, saith the Lord. My brother and sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. The earth is just blessed. See, when Adam and Eve sing, the earth became cursed. But when, hallelujah, Jesus take over the earth again and put it through his fire. Oh, his fire. Did I tell you about his fire? Did everything that goes through his fire gets cleansed 100% or 1,000% or a million percent? I don't know. It just purify everything. And he put this earth through his fire. It, it becomes so pure. I nail in the millennium and grab some of the soil from the ground. I'm looking at the soil. I knew the soil I was grabbing has been put through fire. Intense. Melting. The element will melt, said the apostle Peter. The element will melt. My brother and sister. That's the kind of fire I'm talking about. Where steel will melt like water. Sand will melt like water. Building will melt and be nothing. Like a smoke. My brother, a breach. A breach full of steel. Which is burned like smoke and disappear. Like nothing. And he cleanses everything and purifies all. And they make the earth. Beautiful and flat again. Everywhere. If there are any mountain, which there are mountains, says the prophet Isaiah. That's where God likes to be, in the mountain. But most of the earth is flat again. Nice and even. My brother and sister. It doesn't matter how high the mountain are. You can get there in less than a second. In the blink of an eye, you can be in a mountain hundreds of thousands of miles away. It don't matter. It don't matter the distance. It don't matter how high it is. Your life are distant. Your life are high. It don't matter. Everything you're concerned for, for now, in the millennium, it don't matter. You don't think about what am I going to eat later. That don't even come to your mind. If you desire to eat, you have abundance. A best. The fruits are the best, 100% vitamin C. All the vitamin your body needs, when you eat it, you don't need to go to the bathroom. They are 100% pure. They are 100% full of vitamins. Actually, when you eat it, you have so much energy. My Lord, my God. <laughs> you want to be flying and running around. My brother and sister, like angels. Praise the Lord. I have raised my brother Milton in heaven. We were keeping up together. We were running faster than anything. I had raced with my brother Larry too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
It's like they know what I'm thinking. They know what I love. And when I go to when I go to heaven, they want to raise me. Last time I was there, I raised my brother Milton. I wonder the last time. Thank you, Jesus. We raised together. And we were right there even with each other. Praise the Lord. Until I lost him. And I was thinking, well, look at this guy. He only been here a few, he only been dead uh, from earth a few months ago. And he's already beating me in heaven. <laughs> he was laughing. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Remember, the Lord was taking me to heaven before he went to heaven. So I already been moving in heaven already. And he been there only a few months. He's already faster than me. But I could not even keep up with him. Praise you, Lord. Being in the presence of God and learning from Him, who is humble and meek of heart, you just learn. You just, he just teaches you. My brother and sister, He just teaches you. That's why I tell you, if you're talking, you're not learning. You got to be quiet listen to Him. A word. He'll give you an anointed word for the week, for the day. You take that word and you run with it. And no devil, no demon will hold you back during the week. You overcome all the temptation and attack of the enemy. God will give you a word to deliver you from any trap of any demon. If you seek that word. Once he gives you that word, that word comes with an anointing. It comes into your spirit and you. His word is a shield and a sword. Ephesians 6. Turn it on. Because his word is a shield and a sword. No matter what the enemy has plans against you, you already as a sword, you got your shield and you got your sword and he's also a hedge of protection around you. What did the devil complain to God about Job? He had a hedge of protection around himself, around his home and everything he had. The devil could not touch him. God has to remove the hedge of protection in order for the devil to touch Job. And his property and his children. Joe was a prayer warrior. My brother and sister. But there will come a day where you have to be tested. No temptation comes from God, remember. But the testing and trial he brings to our lives. Now, in these trials and testing, if you only focus on Jesus, you he will help, and you ask him for help, he will help you overcome them easy. My joke is easy. He said, my burden is light. He's testing you with something easy. He's testing your life with something light. And people are complaining, oh, this is so hard. This is so difficult. No, you know why it's so hard, so difficult? Because you're loving things of this earth, of this world. You are in love with the things he wants you to let go. If you only love him, above all, and the trial comes, it will be light and easy for you. Listen, when I tell you this, it is out of my own experience. Years ago, the Lord gave me trials that I thought I was going to die through them. And he showed me that it was because I was in love of things of the world that the Lord had told me to let go. He told me years ago, my son, basketball is not the world. When you love basketball, it comes the sorcery and black magic through the game. LeBron is a demon. And show me him. Allow me to talk with him face to face. I spoke with LeBron James in Florida. I remember face to face when he prayed for the Miami for the Miami Heat. The Lord took me there, a demon. And I said, LeBron, you're a demon. And he looked at me and said, Tell me something new and laughed. I said, You're deceiving these people. And he, he was laughing. He was just laughing at me. You just find out this. I know this all my life. He was laughing at me. And kept walking. My Lord, my God. 
That was that was was entertaining me. My brother and sister. Well, someone say Solid brought the demon and attacked the person. The Lord wanted me to let go of the world. I was holding on to this game. Basketball game. And he had told me that they were demonic. I had a difficult time letting it go. And my trial and testing, I felt like I could not pass them. And it was because I was loving things on this earth. He took me to heaven. I met Kobe Bryant in the valleys in heaven. He was walking with his daughter. And I said, Kobe, you were so famous down on the earth. As a basketball player, he looked at me and said, that don't matter anymore, but only God. He says to me, that was my whole life. I'm in pursuit of God now, knowing him. That's what's important. And he looked at me and said, you are still in love with those things of the, of the world, he says to me. I was shocked when Brian would say this to me, my brother and sister. But it opened my eyes, opened my eyes, my brother and sister, to understanding no. That if you are in love with anything falling up that's sort of evil and wicked, when you're going to trusting and testing and trial, you, like Peter, will sink. My brother and sister, Kobe and his daughter in the valley only look forward to learning the word of God. The time they didn't have on this earth. Now, by the grace and by the mercy of God. You know, I learned this on some of the prayer testimony. That before Kobe died, he went to several of them. Because he had an encounter with Jesus. A few months, I was like two months before he died. And he was preaching to his family and his daughter. That was very close to him. And went to a few basketball players and told them to repent. And seek the Lord that this earth, the vanity make nothing, nothing, my brother and sister, to him, anymore, not anymore. And in that helicopter, I'm sure he was repenting with his daughter because he's in the valleys in heaven. Though I go to the valley of shadow of death, I feel no evil. He's up there, my brother and sister. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He don't care no more that he used to play basketball. When you go to heaven and the wedding and you go and you meet Kobe face to face, you are thinking you're going to meet a great basketball player and he will rebuke you for that. He said, now my life is for God. He'll tell you. That that I have was nothing, vanity of all. And I repent of that. Not anymore, that's not my life. He'll tell you. He told me just like that. And I was, I was happy that he said those things, though, because that's what it is. We're focused on the things that are going to perish down here. Focus on, focus on the things of eternal life. Eternal life. My brother and sister, thank you, Lord. Once people enter the heaven and they see God's glory, and they see all the things that God can do. They see how great heaven is, and all the beauty, and all the abundance, and how great a God is. They repent for every single thing they knew on this earth that they value. Because everything men value on this earth that they think is so highly of them, they're so prideful of them, it's nothing in heaven. The other day in that glory, in the future, on the new earth, when God took me into his presence, when I look back from there, I knew that every single thing we hold value is nothing in his presence. The only thing that is value is our relationship with him. The only thing. God help us. God help us. May God help us. My brother and sister. Thank you, Lord. You'll see, you'll see it with your own eyes when you enter heaven. 
when his glory come upon you, you're going to shout for glory. And when his knowledge come on you 100%, now you may have 3% of knowledge in your brain. When God, give, when God gives you that new body, and you're able to use your brain 100%, and you get the full knowledge of God, my Lord, my God, you're going to shout. Oh, it's all going to come to you. Everything will make sense. Down here, nothing makes sense, my brother and sister. Nothing makes sense down here. It will all make sense. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. I didn't think I would have the energy tonight. I felt tired early. I preached an hour early, but before that, I was tired. So recent, I didn't sleep much. I don't know for what reason I could not sleep. But I said, okay. My brother sister, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Yeshua. One of my computer was dead. And in prayer, God gave me the solution on how to fix the computer. Came from my bed to the computer, boom, boom, plug it back in. Then what God reminded me, told me that I needed to do, the computer is working now. Right away. My brother said, I almost threw it away, a new computer. Because it said, when I blocked out, it would not work. The power supply and the memory and the board is new. Everything is new and it will not work. Plug in, check everything. It's all plug in right, it's all right, it doesn't work. I was about, well, I might end up throwing it away. But I learned something. You put it away and you go pray. You wait for your answer to come from much high. Let it come from high, my brother and sister. Let it come from high. Praise your Lord. When you get a bill that you cannot pay, lay it down and go into prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When a situation comes that you you say, Well, this is out of my this is out of control. How am I gonna fix this? Lay the situation there and go to prayer. God's gonna give you the answer in prayer. He'll let you know. I was in prayer, praying. Thank you, Lord, just praying. And he gave me the answer right there. This is what you need to do. Your computer will work again. Came back, boom, 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 did it. It worked right away. As he said to me in prayer, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worry too much and we sin. We sin. We need to stop sinning, the sin of worry. Stop sinning, the sin of worry, the sin of concern. My brother and sister, Praise you, Jesus. This is a common sin. We need to repent. We need to ask the Lord to help us to overcome these things. Understand that everything down here, it was falling knowledge and falling technology. They are going to break. They are going to break. When I learned mechanic, I learned that I can go to the hardware store, the auto store, and buy from Napa, a Vans, Auto Par, any of these parts store, a starter for a car. And the starter can come defective. I went to three or four starter one time in one car. My brother and sister. Replacing them. And will not work. Replacing them will not work. When I asked someone who had a lot of experience as a mechanic... He said, do you know that you can get them back from the, from the outer part? I said, what? Believe me, I've been doing this for so many years. You can get them back from the outer part. And that was the first time I ever heard that. I thought that if you go buy a new part, it's supposed to work like new. 
new. Because it's new. And he says, no, they, they don't check them. Not all. They check out of our thousands, only a few, and then they'll continue putting on the restaurant, boxing the rest, the rest of them in the, in the warehouses, and they storage them ready for the customer or for the different auto part, and they ship them to the auto part. A lot of them are bad. They have not been checked. Okay? So that's, this, that's why this happens. And when I went to the four starter, it worked. My brother said, I thought it was the car that was garbage. No. Out of all four, three starters were bad and one was good. I was starting up to me. That was my brother something new that I learned as a mechanic. It happens. My brother and sister, they don't check everything. So in this world, my brother and sister, there's so much broken stuff, broken marriage. Broken bank account, broken government, broken computers, broken servers. There's so much stuff that are broken. And then those broken stuff, broken relationship, psychiatry, who had children with mental health problems, my brother and sister, doctor that had children sick, my brother and sister, Lawyers that have family in jail, my brother and sister. And everyone has something broken in their lives. And then you go trusting them, my brother and sister. You go putting your trust on these broken things, on these broken humans, my brother and sister. You think the government has the solution when the government is looking for the solution. But you already think they have it. You already think they have it. No, they don't. They're looking for the solution. My brother and sister, they're looking for They don't have it yet. And there you go trusting them for the solution. Oh, no, our government has our back. We're fine. And the government is just crushing their head, the engineer. I work with engineer, my brother and sister. I, there was an engineer that I worked he, 40 years in the business. My brother and sister. And he had problems sometimes that he could not fix right away. It took him a while. A lot of study, a lot of investigation. I didn't know the one thing you learn if if you go to Harvard or any any college, any university to learn to be an engineer, part of being an engineer that I learned from these engineers that have forty plus years of experience is that when you're trying something and it breaks, you never give up. You keep trying. Let it be electronic, software, my brother and sister, weapons, computers, you name it. They have to come up with a solution, even though they're breaking on them. Then you hear a part of the government, their servers are down. You're trusting on broken stuff, broken thing, broken people. In heaven, they don't have this problem. Our God has nothing broken, my brother and sister. He is perfect. His throne is perfect, my brother and sister. He runs his throne and kingdom. He says in the kingdom of glory and from heaven, he has total control of everything. My brother and sister. Hallelujah. You look at humanity and you, you see people sinning and doing bad stuff, shooting other people. And then you look at God and you think there's something wrong with God. No. When the day God made men, he made them in his image he made them in his likeness. He made them perfect. My brother and sister, he made everything perfect in the beginning. God, that he share his glory with men. My brother and sister, God will not walk amongst a sinner. My brother and sister, unless... Hallelujah. 
Oh, my Lord, God help me explain this. My Father in heaven, help me. How can I explain you, oh God, when no one has been able to? How can I? A simple man, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. God said to this brother, with how many fathers say I'm speaking well on the earth? He said, Father, how many are you speaking to on this earth? Brother Larry said, very excited. He thought there was a great multitude that God is speaking to. Father, he says, how many fingers do you have in your hand? Father, ten. Less than your finger in your hand. Father, Larry was shocked. How can this be? We got billions of people on the earth. And Father said, less than ten he's speaking to on this earth. My brother and sister, my Lord, my God. The Lord is speaking to many. He is. He does. My brother and sister, praise your Lord. Praise your God. But you know what God said? Not many are willing to walk with me. Oh, God. Not many are willing. In other words, he gives you the chance to come to Christ and build your relationship with him. But people are saying, wait a minute, Father. That's too much for me. Sister said to me, Brother Larry, that was too much glory. I could not take it. Human being cannot take that much glory. I said, Sister, don't say that. Hallelujah. Joe said that though he'll kill me, I will still worship him. God knows how much you can take. Don't tell God, no, 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 no. God has too much glory. Look at my flesh. It's about to melt, God. It's about to melt. The fire is burning me, Father. Let, let him. Let him consume you. Let him take out of your life all. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. My brother and sister, he's enough for us. That's what he is. He's enough for us. He's more than enough. Hallelujah. And when you are with him, thank you, Lord. You will never want to be out of his presence. The other day, he brought me into his presence. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. I was in, in a deep glory in God. My Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He takes me out. Oh, no. Oh, no. He takes me out. He takes me out to send me back. He took me out. I didn't want to come out of that glory. Cause I, afraid of coming back here. Oh. I'm already in there. And I'm so happy. And again. I am so joyful. I am full in his fullness. Oh, I kind of had this, like, I know that I was supposed to look down to see the earth new, but I didn't want it to. Because I had a feeling that if I look out of his glory, if I step out of his glory, he was going to send me back here again. I don't want to come back down here anymore. Not anymore. It was not my time to stay again. Not yet. Very, very soon. But I didn't want to come out of that glory. He wanted me to see. And then there's no disobedience in God. You have to see what he wants you to see. Oh, my Lord, my God. I was so happy, so joyful. My brother and sister, he fills you all, body, soul, and spirit, 100% or more. And you are so happy and so joyful in his presence. You never want to come out. Never. Nothing matters to me anymore. Nothing. You cannot say anything to me in that glory that will want me to get out of that glory. Nothing matters anymore. But only him, only him, 
only him. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Yeshua. And it's like when you are in that glory, it's like eternity passes you by. Eternity passes you by in that glory. Because you are so happy, you never want to come out of his presence. My brother and sister, never. That's where our joy is. That's where our peace is. My Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, oh, God, he made us in his presence. He made us in his anointing. He made us in his fire. And this is why in his presence we are so happy. Because he made us in his presence. That's why he made us back in eternity. You and I, our spirit and our soul was made there. With the Lord and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And we when, he, we, when he bore us, we were so happy in his presence. Thank you, Lord. So happy, my brother and sister, that every time he touches us with his presence, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, when the Lord touches our life, we feel so happy. We cry like babies. We were there. He's our Father. It is our Spirit. He's our Lord, my Lord, my God, my Savior. He's mine. He's yours. It's where we are happy. My brother and sister. It's where you're full of joy. It's where we're supposed to be. If you feel lost, it's because you're not in His presence. In his presence, you don't feel lost. You feel found. When you are with God, you will never feel lost. You feel found. You find your home. You find your joy. When you find him, you find everything you ever needed. Because he is our father. You will never call any man father. You will never call any woman mother. God is our all, my brother and sister. Father is our all. Thank you, Lord. I miss Father so much. I miss the Lord. I miss the Holy Spirit. My Lord, my God. When a week passes or two or three without me being in heaven in his presence, oh, it's like my soul began to cry. Hallelujah. I began to desire him more than life. And dying is joy to me. If I can just be in his presence. My brother and sister. He's our all. He is our all. My brother and sister. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. He is so big. And at the same time, he's in our lives. Hallelujah. You know how I see an angel a thousand feet tall, right? Fallen angels. I saw Jesus. He must have been a million feet or more tall. He wanted me to see him this way. Can you imagine someone being a million feet high and more? That was Jesus, my brother and sister. <laughs> How many years that it takes for someone maybe to get from here to the kingdom of heaven? Billions of years? The Lord can just be there in less than a second. But he also can be standing here and reaching out to heaven. My brother and sister. <laughs> He's almighty God. We cannot imagine how powerful he is. But when you're with him, you may ask him one day, Lord, how powerful are you? <laughs> He's going to look at you and smile. 
Hallelujah. I don't know. He may show you a display of his power. One day, he's bringing me to his throne. I believe in the third heaven, second planet. And it was like nuclear weapon coming out of his throne at the same time. But now it's just one, several of them. Boom, boom, boom. The biggest explosion of glory coming out of Jesus' throne, my brother and sister. And it's constantly this way. Imagine one of the biggest planets. And this like nuclear weapon coming out of his throne all the time. Explosion. Bigger than nuclear weapon, because I seen a nuclear weapon, but this was beyond that. And to him, that was like nothing, nothing. Everything to him is like nothing. You'll see things that you'll be like, you'll be with your mouth open and your eyes open. And you're like, you don't want to blink, and you don't, want, you cannot even close your mouth of the powerful and glory. And to him, it's like nothing. He's more happy to have your heart and for you to talk with him than all he has, my brother and sister. Your heart to him is more important than any planet. Your relationship that you have with him, he has with you, is more important than all those galaxies and planets you see, my brother and sister. He just wants your heart. He wants your love. He wants you to be loved by him. My brother and sister. He's so mighty and so powerful, but then so loving. His love is everything to him. That's why the Bible says God is love. His love is everything. It is just everything. That's what he is, love. He's not, he doesn't say that, wow, how amazing all this I created. No, he looks at your heart, he looks at you. My child, welcome. Welcome home, my child. And we'll spend time with you there. And they will laugh, he will joke with you. He joked with me. First time God, God started yoking, I always had that yoking attitude in my life. And people will say, why are you always joking about things? But it was something out of me, natural, that would come out. And I didn't know. I, sometimes I thought it was not right for me to be this way. Some people say, you cannot joke with everything. Oh, my wife will always say that. People always say that to me. You got to be careful who you joke with. I like to see people laugh. My brother insisted. And Father joked with me. And the Lord Jesus too. He's laughing. He laughs. He enjoys being with us. He laughed. He was laughing. I, my best friend, my best body, as we say. He's your friend. He's your best brother, best sister. My brother and sister. He's just so fun to be with. God is so fun to be with. If, if people would, when people spoke to me about God years ago, I didn't know he was this way until I met him face to face. He's so fun to be with. He's not like I thought, oh, God's going to kill you for this or that. No, he's fun. He loves you. My brother and sister, thank you, Lord. You come through his throne, Third heaven, third level. He has a smile. Jesus looked at me and smiled. And I walked the Father. Chutama was standing right there. Father. And it's like I always knew him. He always knew me. Not a stranger at all. I'm speaking with my Father. He's welcoming me to his mighty throne there. He had me move forward close to him. And now I'm looking at Almighty God. My Lord, my God. Why wasn't his word preached this way? For so many years, I could have used a friend. 
I could have used someone loving me. I went through my, so much hurt in my life growing up. Abuse. Back in the island, you, you have to respect everybody. You get smacked by people. By just making a mistake, I got smacked. I got hit over the head. I had the bell on my back almost every day. I was being abused growing up until 14. Came to the United States. I had the most difficult childhood. Because they want to make you a man. You are a child. They want to make you a man. And they use the bell on you. So there's no saying no. Your uncle, my uncles, my aunt, my grandma, they use the bell on you. You better grow up now. No time to be playing with car. You're 10 years old. You're 9 years old. You want to play with car. You want to. No. You got to behave like a man. You got to act like a man. You got responsibility in the house. You have no time to play. And if you try, they got the bell on you and they beat you. That was my childhood. Difficult, hard. And I say, if there's a God up there, I want to meet him. I need to meet him. I'm willing to die to meet God. My brother and sister, when you are a child, you are abused, you care nothing for your life. If they kill you, they do you a favor. And that's how I grew up. I got to meet the Creator. I got to meet God. Because I had such a hard life growing up. Being beaten all the time for nonsense and foolishness. I got to meet the Creator. My brother and sister. When I came to the Lord, and I asked him, how do you meet God? How, you, how do you have a relationship with him? People laugh at me in church. And I'm thinking, that's not kind. I'm asking, and they're laughing. Oh, no, you know, he got to call you. He, and they gave me all kinds of excuses. I said, how do I meet him? Well, start reading your Bible. Okay, started reading my Bible every day. Reading my Bible, reading my Bible. Read. Go on to work, before going to work, pray, read my Bible. So what do I need to have? You got to have a relationship with him. This brother had a beautiful relationship with the Lord. The Lord will speak with him. I said, brother, how do you build to have this relationship with Jesus? He prayed early in the morning, every day in the Word. He said, I spend most of my time in the Word. I pray to him. I talk with him. If you want to have this relationship with him, you got to do the same. I say, okay, I'm willing to do the same. My brother and sister, just willing. It didn't matter what it costs. You tell me how I'm doing it. I don't care. No, but if you keep fasting doing it this way, you're going to die. So what? I want to meet him. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He knew. He knew my heart. I think the Lord says, if I if I don't meet him, he'll be there soon. Praise you, Lord. Willing to do anything to meet him. Praise you, God. Remember the Lord say that I was praying for a year over nonstop and fasting. Just fasting. Every day. Almost every day. Praise the Lord. Just so I can have an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. But then he teaches you. And listening to him is what that I didn't have. And then you need to listen to him. And he'll teach you and tell you what you need to do. Okay. And that's where I needed to read Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. My brother and sister, in reading the book of Proverbs, the Lord, I began to ask the Lord for wisdom because I had none. I don't even dare say I have wisdom. My brother and sister, because when you have none, and he began to give me wisdom, he told me he gave me wisdom. My brother and sister, 
is that you want to meet him. I was tired of listening to men. No more voice of men. I want to hear his voice. I want to hear him. I want to meet him. Until he led me to Genesis 12, Genesis 15 and, and 17, a meeting with Abraham. And that's if Abraham was a man and he came with two angels, met him face to face, then, oh Lord, you can do this for me also. It's okay if I'm less than Abraham. But as far as I know, from the dirt of the earth he was made, so was I. I think I have a chance. My brother and sister. And he began to show me, reveal me, give me wisdom and understanding until he came to me and I saw him. My brother and sister. I was nervous and began to ask him to come again. Hallelujah. And he began to guide me, talk to me. My brother and sister. It's saw his leading. It's his leading. Him and the Holy Spirit are one. Paul says to the church, for the Lord is the Holy Spirit. The one. People separate him. Some people say, the Holy Spirit told me so. And other people say, the Lord told me so. They're the same. When I say the Lord, I also say in the Holy Spirit. When I say the Lord, hallelujah, I, it also means the Father. But I've been blessed to know the Father in the Lord and the Holy Spirit. So when the Father, like the other day, when he told me it was over, it was the Father, the Lord and the Father together. So I knew there was them too when he spoke to me. But it was, it's God that helps you get close to him. You got to ask him. You got to tell him, Lord, I would like to get close to you. Lord, I would like to, like Abraham, not like Elvi. If you say like Elvi, no, say like Abraham. Because Abraham is biblical. He is one of the Bible. To say like Abraham, I would like to meet you, Lord, face to face, like Jacob, like Isaac. The Bible says that God spoke face to face with them. He spoke face to face with Moses. They all saw God face to face. You can have the same blessing from God, my brother and sister. And you can see the Lord. My wife, until all this year, the other day when she saw Jesus, a few weeks ago, all this life she wanted to see him, heard me talking about him, and then she saw him. My brother insisted, oh, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, sometime it takes, and it all depends on your repenting and seeking him. My brother and sister, praise your Lord. The joy that gives you when you see the Lord face to face, when he speaks to you, it changes your life as a believer. It changes your life as a believer. When, when you see him, when you talk to him, it changes you because, you know, if there were any religious part in you, it goes away. Because now you're in a relationship with him, one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what we all need. That's the way it was in the garden. That's the way it was for the children of Israel. My brother and sister. I always share this verse out of the book of uh, Judges. Where anyone who thinks that the Lord only appear to the, to, to, the, to the patriarch, my brother and sister. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When he had, my brother and sister, appear... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, to the people also. He had appeared to the people also. But a lot of people only think that he had only appeared. My brother and sister to the patriarch. Hallelujah. Listen to this. And I'll pray Sister Barbara put out a word that Jesus confirmed to me. Persecution is at the door. It's about to begin. Or well, it's beginning any day. It's beginning any day now. Get ready for God that in repentance. My brother and sister. Hallelujah. Listen to this. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Second Judges 2, verse 1, the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, came up from Gagal to Baal and said, I made you go out, up out of, the, out of Egypt, and I have brought you into the land which I swore unto your father. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. See, this is God speaking here, my brother and sister. Verse 2, and you should make no league with the inhabitant of this land. Why did he say this? Because ye are holy people, chosen, elected, selected by the Lord. My brother and sister. And, and people today think that they can, they can get mingled with anyone. They're wrong. They're wrong. Listen to the Lord. The angel of the Lord came out from Gigal to Washington and said, I will make you go. I made you go out of, out of Egypt. I have brought you into the land which I soar unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. God never break his promise. Verse 3, therefore I said, I will not drive them out from, out from before you, but they shall be a thorn in your side, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Why? Because the children of Israel refused to remove themselves, to keep themselves from these people among them. My brother and sister, and God say, oh, you want to have them? I'll let you have them. They're going to be a snare, a thorn and a snare unto your life. That's what they're going to be, saith the Lord. Verse 4, And it came to pass that when the angel of the Lord spoke this word unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted out their voice and wept. Do you see why the Lord came to his own and his own should receive him? Because their parents knew the Lord face to face. When the Lord showed me this, my Lord, I almost fell back from my chair years ago. My brother and sister, I didn't know that the children of Israel can see the Lord among them, walking among them and the angels. There's another verse in Psalm that the, his angel were among them. When the Lord took me in person to the times of Noah, angel was walking among the people in the daylight. They can talk with the angel, and, and, and they were friendly with the angel. Face to face, they saw them. My brother and sister. Hallelujah. When the Lord, the angel of the Lord, spoke this word unto the children of Israel, all the people lifted up their voice and wept. How many people? How many people saw him and spoke with him and heard his voice? Only a few, only the leader. Read your Bible again. Read your Bible again. Say, Lord, show me. They call the name of the place for a sheen, that is weeping, and they, they sacrifice there unto the Lord, my brother and sister. They just notice. They just find out they have made the biggest mistake mistake of their lives, my brother and sister, for not setting themselves apart, which means holiness, which, which means righteousness. Hey, 